depends on the solution, the whole components depend on the function we are applying it to you. And the equation is a totally uh, is a non-linear equation, not only because of this coefficient, but also because the direction of uh, uh, the vector field. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> um, the direction of the coefficient depend on theta. This is a very it makes things a little bit more complicated while studying the equation because we are taking derivative in the direction of these vector fields. And the direction in which we have and we can make derivatives is unknown. So at the very beginning we do not even know in which direction we are allowed to take a derivative and in which direction we are not. So this type of uh, problems never ar arise in the Euclidean setting and it is a purely uh, uh, problem which arises in this specific uh, case. This is why we had uh, this first uh, result and then now there is more literature on this uh, equation which however is still an uh, open problem. We also have, I forgot to write it, um, result uh, together with Davide and sim apparently simply or standard problem as for example shorter estimate of the boundary as an uh, uh, open problem, totally open problem in this sense. So existence, so this is why existence for non-linear equation is this a uh, problem. So oh, what's this? So go getting back to a more modelistic problem, when we consider our surface, oh sorry, we have here a result which tells us that a viscosity solution which is Lipschitz is C infinity and this has proved together with Caponia and Barbieri. And we have to understand also what is a surface which is C infinity with respect to, uh, of this nonlinear vector fields. So let's look as to a surface at every point, this is foliated in horizontal curves. So, the space, in the space we have two good directions and one bad direction. In a surface, we have one direction, only one regularity direction at every point. So, when we um, study the minimal surfaces, so the problem with curvature equals zero, the equation becomes this one, you make computations and it reduces to the equation x1 square theta equals zero. In this particular case, we have something which never happened in the Euclidean setting, since on this surface, at every point, we only have one horizontal curve. This means that we never have transverse uh, regularity, or we can have no transverse regularity, so being C infinity means only being C infinity in one direction. Does not mean being uh, C infinity in all direction. Along the direction, the horizontal curve, we have geodesics because since the surface coincide with a curve and the curve with zero curvature is a geodesic, this coincides with a geodesic. And of course, this is a completely different setting from the Euclidean, where we have two curves at every point. And so when we make completion, we make completion with geodesic. And from on this, uh, there are the works with, uh, of uh, Duitz and Boscain, who have worked a lot on this. And since we reduced the equation to the Laplacian, it is the minimum of this functional. So this is the gradient of theta with a special metric, which is a metric which already Alex has shown this morning. And now we have studied two layers of the cortex, the LGN and the um, simple cells. We can try to see if we can put them together because we had a minimum of the Dirichlet integral for the, um, the LGN cells, for the uh, cells responsible of contrast, and for the uh, simple cells, we had minimum of the Dirichlet function associated to this norm. And then, 
in the, um, the simple cells detect gradient, so we introduce an interaction term which is that the gradient of phi is A. Let's see more in detail. This, firm, this first term here is the retinex. We start with an image, we look for another function which differs uh, from this one by a harmonic. So this was the first term. Here we require that the vector field A is completed with respect to an angle theta, which is the direction of A. So this part here is responsible to boundary completion, and this term here tells us that we are studying the gradient of the uh, function phi. So when we start with image, first we take the existing boundary from this part here, and then using this part of the equation with, which complete the boundaries. So these were the existing one and these boundaries are the completed one. But now we have both this and this completed boundaries. So we can apply again the retinex model with the whole set of boundaries, the existing one and the subjective one. While doing this, we obtain the triangle. So this is what we perceive. So this model tells us how to put together two families of cells, but as I was saying before, this model here only works locally because we only make minimum function and indeed we had a bad time to find these inductors. So in this first model we were obliged to impose from outside that these three here are the inductors. On the other side with the technique Alessandro has shown this morning with a grouping technique with his uh, equation it is also possible to prove that the first eigenvalue is of uh, the associated metric and the neural equation he proved, the first eigenvalue is associated to this inductor, this one and this one. So the next step would be to try to put together this model, this model put together two different uh, family of cells, but is local. The model pro uh, presented by Alessandro is global, but is only one family of cells. So the next step would be to try to design a model which put together more families of cells and it is global. So, thank you for your attention. So in, the, in, the, in this model, when you have the surrealistic operator, you put some kind of viscosity, vanishing viscosity argument to yeah. to, to have the, the, the estimate. Yeah. But oh. this is curious that then it's independent of epsilon, the, the estimate from... Yeah, we have a very simple proof by the way, because what we can do is, I'll show you, it's not so uh, strange because we start with um, result of, there is a result of Gromov, who has already proved that the distance the, in the uh, Riemannian approximation tends to the distance in the sub-Riemannian case. So we started with a very good uh, starting point. And then, let's see, I, I show you in the simple case of the Heisenberg group, which is this one, the x plus y the z. So this is a linearization of the previous one. Uh, so let's, otherwise we can put Z and the Y. So it's more clear that it is a linearization. Here we had a cosine, here we had a sine. So this is a linearization. And then we had the second derivative with respect of Z. And if we want, we can put the T. This is not... Um, okay, so we add plus epsilon squared 
the y is squared, then we want to study this operator. And of course, at first glance, you think that everything depends on this epsilon and everything will blow up. But what you can do is you just add a new variable. Which, by the way, is exactly what the, uh, the brain does. What it does not do, know what to do is add a new variable. <laughs> so we don't know how to handle this epsilon. We add a new variable, which is completely new for the problem. And now you send epsilon to zero. If you look in this way, it's clear that nothing happens because you can use this metric. And then you project back. So you go up in a higher dimensional group, make your computation in the higher dimensional group, and you go back. So this is exactly the same mechanism as the formal way. I'm sorry, so I mean, in the, in the hyperliptic case, estimates for the heat kernel in that form are no. Yeah. Right, and also these groups. This group, uh, I mean, so uh, the, the so this group, the operator the are... And estimates of the heat current are, are no. In the, when epsilon is zero. Equals zero, right. So, I mean, this is to show that as your epsilon approaches zero, you get the right estimate. Yeah. Independent of epsilon. But yeah. So in the case, the estimate is... Okay. It's expected that you get something independent of epsilon. Okay, not... Yeah, that's the point, the why. But one of the main problems here is that when we study the uh, minima surface, then we do not have any more right. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, hypoelliptic yeah. operator. Mm -hmm. And so yes. that's why we had to implement a different technique. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But in this case, yeah, this is hypoelliptic. In the limit, this is hypoelliptic, and then you use, use the hypoellipticity right. of this, yeah. So in the sense, I mean, it's totally expected that you get... Yeah, you get I think it, there is more. I think there is more because I feel, even though I, I cannot give a proof of this, but I expect that if you have an operator and it has, um, and his fundamental form is positive, then you have a theorem, that this is a theorem of Bonny, which tells you that the maxima propagates along the direction of vector fields. So you do not, uh, you sit at a point, you have a positive and you have an internal maximum, you sit on this point and consider the integral curve in the direction of a positive angle vector. Then your function will be constant on that. So you have a strong maximum principle in the direction of positivity of your fundamental form. Independently of the fact that the other direction are degenerate or not, let's make a very, uh, just an example. If you look at this uh, domain, and you look at this equation in R2. So this means that you have a totally degenerate equation in the y direction, but you have a nice infinity solution in the dx direction. So you look at your operator, you ask him which are the direction in which he regularly arise, and in this direction you have the standard uh, regularity. In this case, it's clear, it's trivial, if you have vector fields or nonlinear, it's not known in general. But for the maximum principle, it is known. So whatever equation you have here, you find your, you have a set, you have an interior maximum, you find an integral curve of this vector field, your, your function is constant on this curve. Mm -hmm. And you are not asking what happens in another direction. If you can fill the whole space, good. You have the standard strong maximum principle. Otherwise, you have the strong maximum principle on the set you can reach with your curves. So this is only a, 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 a maximum propagation theorem. But if you propagate your maximum in a strong way, you can expect that also regularity has to be propagated in the same way. That's why we have this foliation of our um, surface. At every point, we only have one curve. 
which is horizontal, uh, and we propagate regularity only on this curve. So it's exactly the same picture. And this is why I expect that once you can understand correctly which are the direction of propagation, which is the distance, which is the homogeneous dimension, then you can, you should be able to give um, estimate along the curve in which you have regularity. But I have no idea of how to prove this. Just is an impression.